Hi guys, I trust you're well. Um, I wanted us to look at um, this all this very difficult topic, the topic of dealing with um, bad leaders, when a leader is bad, when a leader is evil. Now the funniest thing is the rules don't differ as far as God is concerned. By the grace of God, we're always going to keep it based on what the Bible says. Okay, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, correct me. If I'm right, then ask yourself, are you doing it right? You know, if you are wrong, be humble enough to correct yourself. The Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted work, well, word of God. Meekness means that you've been offended and you have a right to react. But you have to choose not to. Because that's what it's going to take to be able to receive what God is telling you. Again, I maintain God is not being apologetic. God is not being sorry. God is not being politically correct. God is saying what is. He's saying what he created and he's saying what he expects of you. And um, if you will not live by his rules, he's not forcing you. Jesus said, if you, if you do not obey my words, I do not judge you. But my words eventually will judge you. You know, we're talking about the end time and then when things come back. I mean, when Jesus comes back, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with uh, the reality of it. I'm going to take, I'm going to take us into this passage in uh, uh, Acts chapter 23. Paul had been arrested. He was brought before the Sanhedrin. That's the Jewish council. Um, and uh, they were questioning him. So he said something about, you know, Jesus. And somebody said they should slap him. As soon as they, I think they slapped him, he now turned to the person who spoke and said, The Lord shall smite you, thou whited wall. And somebody asked him, How dare you speak to the high priest like that? And Paul said, Wow, I'm sorry. I did not know that he was the high priest. Because the Bible says, the word of God is it's written, You shall not speak against the leader of your people there are no exceptions paul was doing the right thing he was being wrongfully accused and wrongfully treated wrongfully brutalized and these people were being mean to him he had a right to react and he reacted then he found that the person he was reacted reacting to was somebody who was placed in position above him and he immediately apologized some of us are too proud to apologize. Some of us are too proud to accept that somebody has been placed over us. But the Bible is not sorry about it. The word of God says anybody that has been placed over you is authority over you. You have to respect that authority. See, many of us, we open our mouths and speak stupidity. You know, we, we it's, it's, it's just... It's, it's a level of foolishness that baffles me. Especially those of us who call, us, who call ourselves children of God. Well, with the last elections, for instance, as the elections drew closer, this saddens my heart. Because I really do not want to speak against anybody. I really do not. But the truth has to be said. See, we saw a lot of our pastors speaking openly against the president. Many, those who know me know that I kind of support the president. Listen, I'm not, I'm not doing it because I feel like doing it or because I like what he's doing. No, I have a lot of concerns about many things that are happening in the country. But, but, the word of God says, I should not speak against the ruler of my people. As a result, because I do not desire to speak against the will of my people, I program myself, I teach myself to find positive things to say. Listen, that's the only way to do it. See, many of us are used to rules, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. But if, if thou shalt not, then what shalt thou? Are you following me? If there are things you should not do, then what should you be doing? Because God doesn't expect you to sit down doing absolutely nothing. Okay? If you have a garden and you plant nothing in it, you 
because you shall not plant this or you shall not plant that well weed will begin will, weeds will begin to grow so you have to actively look for something positive to do you can't just live your life based on the things you will not do and that's one of the things i tell a lot of people that i speak with you know don't just say i will not do this or i will not do this no instead fill that vacuum with what you are going to do and i'll tell you what i do number one i pray for my leaders i pray for those who god has put in authority over me whether they are good or they are bad it does not make any difference i pray for them number two if i must open my mouth to talk about them i look for something positive to say you see i, I, I don't i don't understand where we come up with the idea that it's okay to speak against the leader don't get me wrong you're not supposed to justify anything evil they do. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Many of us misunderstand that passage. Many of us think that the passage is saying that if I have sinned in my life. No, that's not what it said. If I regard, if I regard iniquity, if I regard, 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 what do you mean? When you regard something, what do you mean? You respect it. Hmm? If I have respect for iniquity, if I praise that which is wrong, if I say rank a day day baba niye twale baba for somebody i know is evil the lord will not hear me so no i am not regarding that which is evil but i'm looking for something positive to say if i must say something at all some of us are anointed to do great things but we step out of line and the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. If you sow rebellion, you will reap rebellion. You see, we don't understand why this cycle of violence and foolishness continues to persist in our societies. It's because those who are coming up, we don't respect those who are above us. We don't. And so we are surprised when we get into position of authority and people begin to challenge us. Listen, look at David. David was, a, David was a farmer, King David. He was, he was, he was a farmer, he was a, he, was a, he was a shepherd boy. From then on, yeah, even though he killed Goliath and spent some time in the king's palace, he, he, he was driven into the wilderness and he lived there for years. I would argue potentially up to 20 years, if not more. And while he was there, the people who came to him were vagabonds. So why did God elevate him? Granted, God had anointed him. Why did God sustain his, 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 uh, his kingship? Because when he had the power, when he had the right, when he had the opportunity to usurp the position of the man who was before him, he did not do it. As a result, as a result, when he became king, the only time there was rebellion against David was when David himself rebelled against Saul against them uh, against god by killing raya to take his wife Bathsheba. children of god when you rebel against authority that which is below you begins to rebel against you listen moses is one of the people one of the characters in the bible that i respect the most when i think about the life of moses Many times when I talk about him, tears come to my eyes. There are so many of them. There's Job, there's Moses, there's Joseph, there's Daniel, there's Jesus. Of course, there's Jesus. Almost all of them. Almost all of them. When I think about Moses in particular, when I think about his life, tears come to my eyes. And I realize, listen, I cannot judge this fellow. It's foolishness, I think, to judge people. Many, for instance, Samson, and I will speak on Samson sometime soon. Many people judge Samson, call him foolish and stupid, and uh, practically all of us are falling into the same trap that he fell into. Yet we stand in front of everybody and we say he's foolish, he's stupid, and we go and fall into the same traps that he fell into. And we call Solomon. Well, Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Okay, that's not what this video is about. That's not what this video is about. Uh, Moses. You know, Moses' problems started the day he told God, this problem is too much for me. And this is not my responsibility. I'm not the one who gave birth to these people. Why should I have to carry their, their burdens? So God said, okay, I'll take some of the anointing on you and pour it on the people around you. 
But from that day on, Moses started having problems with the people that he did not have before. I didn't know this until I read it in one of Billy's books. Um, so I, but I realized that it's true. Reading it from, um, I think, uh, chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11, through the end of the of book of, of Numbers, we begin to see things begin to happen. People begin to rebel against Moses, uprisings, people challenging his authority because he challenged the position that God gave him. You know, he challenged what God himself instructed him to do. The Bible says rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Children of God, whatever is in your life that does not glorify God, get rid of it. And part of the, one of those things is dishonoring those who God has put in authority over you. The Bible says there is no authority but of God. There is none. When Jesus was about to be crucified and uh, Pilate was feeling like he was on top of the world, Jesus told him, you have no authority over me except that which God has given you. Listen, even if it is a wicked king, he is there because God allowed him to be there. This is a big, a big challenge for many people. And I have gotten many questions when I speak along these lines about what about if somebody, if you were in slavery, read the Bible. Read the Bible. The Bible tells us verbatim that if you are a slave, serve your master well. Let's look at what happened in the United States uh, generations ago, you know, the slavery thing and all that. It was, it was, God does not support rebellion. God does not support rebellion. God does not support rebellion. I said it three times. <laughs> so whatever your reason or excuse for thinking that it's okay to walk away from what God, where God has put you, you're wrong. Stay there. Pray. God will teach you. God will teach you. Somebody like Donald Trump, for instance, many people around the world don't like him. I like him. I appreciate the fact that he speaks the truth. That is the way he sees it. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the media doesn't like him. I like Donald Trump. But more than that, I know that he is there. Because God wants him to be there. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem. Burnt it down. Carried all its people away. Castrated some of them. Daniel chapter 4. When he was feeling like he was a big man, God reminded him, you are here because I want you to be here. Hazael. When Elijah got tired and ran. I'm the only one that is left and then God corrected and God reset his mind. God told him, go and anoint Elisha, go and anoint Hazael. Immediately he left that place, he found Elisha and anointed him. Elijah was dead. Or rather, was gone, was in heaven. And Elisha, whom he anointed as a young man, was an old and blind prophet before Azael showed up. God told Elijah to anoint Azael. And when Azael showed up, I believe it's um, <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 19 or thereabouts. When Azael showed up, he ran into a blind Elisha. Elisha. And Elisha was started crying when he saw her. He didn't see when Elijah was with him. And, so, and prophesied and told him, this is what you are going to do to the people of Israel. Isaiah was a Syrian. And he prophesied. Elisha prophesied and said, you are going to kill the people of Israel. You are going to kill their wives. You are going to draw, you are going to draw babies from their wombs. God knew all this was going to happen. And yet God instructed that Isaiah be anointed king. Children of God, we need to understand this. The fact that the king is evil does not mean that he was not there. That does not mean that God did not put him there. God expects you to humble yourself and learn. God expects you to check your life and correct whatever may be wrong. He says, if my people, not everybody, not everybody, if my people who are called by my name, not the whole nation, just the people who are called by the name of Jesus, by the name of God, children of God, Christians, whatever it is you choose to call yourself, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven 
I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If there are problems in your land, you don't need to be attacking the person in the, in, in, in the, in the office. You need to go to God in prayers. Humble yourself and pray. Confess your own sins. Confess your own failures. Confess to all the times you fail to intercede for those who are above you. Confess and humble yourself and turn from your own wicked ways. Then God will hear from heaven. He will forgive your sin. He will heal your land. You want healing in Nigeria? You want healing on this planet? Go down on your knees and pray. Submit yourself to any authority because there is no authority but of God. I want to read it directly from the scripture before I close this. It reads here in um, Romans chapter 13, verse 1. I'll read the first two verses. There's more to it. You should read the entire chapter and meditate on it and let God teach you. It says here, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. He didn't say the good powers that be. He didn't say there, are, mm -mm, there is no power but of God. Yes. <sighs> I'm not in that department. So, whosoever resisted the power resisted the ordinance of God, and they shall resist, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Damnation. Now, for those of us who even think that, eh, eh, that, that whatever, is wicked, whatever. If God sends you, gives you a message for the king, go and give the message to the king. People did not rebel in God's time. No. They brought their message to the king. For instance, when Jeroboam raised, all, raised the idols for the first time in Israel, there was this young prophet that was sent to him. And the prophet went there and said, O king, this is what is going to happen because of these idols. He did not say a single word against that king. It's foolishness to open your mouth and speak negativity. The Bible says, uh, uh, um, what's that, what's that, what's that word? I'm trying to remember that word. Uh, 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 ordinance. No, 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 no. Uh, what's that? Uh, speaking evil of dignities. <laughs> Speaking evil of dignities. He says it's a special level of foolishness. Peter wrote about it. Jude wrote about it. He wrote about it. It's a special level of foolishness to speak evil of somebody who is in authority over you. Don't. Even if the person is wicked, go and pray. And this goes into marriage as well. If your wife or if your husband, you feel your husband is a bad person, you go to go to God in prayer. God will work it out for you unless you don't trust him. And that's the biggest problem. Most of us just don't trust God. And that's what it is. Well, thank you for we thank you for watching. I uh, hope you are able to share this with people. If you have questions, ask. If you have comments, comment. We will react. Like the video. Subscribe. No, click on the notification to get more videos. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.